What's up y'all, Talon here. And today I'm excited to be sharing the first rental team of the uh, post Teal Mask DLC metagame. We have a couple Pokemon that were featured in the Teal Mask DLC, namely Komuo, Okidoki, and the ever dominant Ogre Pond. I'm sure we're gonna be seeing a lot of those new Pokemon in the future, but yeah, if you're a little confused how I'm gonna be able to get in battles today, the rank ladder for some reason is allowing the new DLC Pokemon, even though Technically, they shouldn't be allowed in Regulation D, but for some reason, through some sort of glitch that has not been patched out and doesn't seem like it's going to be, they are legal on the ladder. So we'll be, we're going to be piloting this team with Tornadus uh, Como with a Clangorous Soul set, the Assault Vest Okidogi, and the Ogre Pond uh, Hearth Flame Mask. So it's going to be a really fun team. I hope you guys enjoy the battles. If you do enjoy these teams, if you enjoy the rental code as a resource, please subscribe to the channel. I really appreciate it. Trying to hit a thousand subs. And yeah, let's get into an overview of the team. So this team was able to go undefeated in the Swiss portion of a very popular uh, grassroots tournament that goes on online. It's called the Wide League. I'll have that tournament results linked below. The team was able to go, I think it was maybe 7-0 or uh, maybe 8-0 in the, I might have been best of one Swiss, but regardless, really impressive starting record. And then it was able to get a 10-0 record into the finals before finally losing there, but still a really impressive finish. And it has a lot of really interesting picks, so I wanted to share it with you guys. So starting off, I'm gonna go top left corner and bottom right corner is the Tornadus with, uh, it's pretty standard looking, the Terra Ghost Tailwind Taunt Bleak Wind Storm. We saw some Sunny Day in previous, uh, previous formats to support Chi Yu, but uh, in this case, we're actually supporting the Terra, Fire, Mold Breaker, Hearth Flame Mask, Ogre Pawn. If you weren't aware, after going for the Terra Fire on your Ogre Pawn and Body Aspect gives you an instant plus one boost, kind of like an uh, Azation Intrepid Sword. If you switch in and out, you're gonna keep getting that boost. So it's a really strong ability. Uh, unfortunately, you do lose Mold Breaker, but the advantage of Ogre Pawn's Mold Breaker is essentially you can hit Heatran with Ivy Cudgel uh, for neutral damage if they haven't Terran and if they're Terra Grass, you hit that for super effective. So it's a really cool ability. And you're a little sad to see it go when you go for Embody Aspect, but not as sad as your opponents are when you're just hitting them with that plus one hammer of the cudgel. Especially in Sun, with the Terra Boost, you, you essentially tripled your damage output, and it's already a really strong move. If you get a crit, it even gets more crazy. So yeah, just a really broken combination where you're oftentimes going Tailwind plus uh, Spiky Shield, and the next turn going for Sunny Day Ivy Cudgel and just taking KOs left and right in Tailwind. A secondary mode for the team is actually to not use the Ogre Pawn as main offense, but as follow me support for the Clangorous Soul Como. So Clangorous Soul is an interesting move, uh, kind of in substitution for the uh, signature Z move that Como lost, Clangorous Soul Blaze in the past generations. It now has Clangorous Soul, which is a Omni Boost move. You get a plus one boost to all your stats, except for evasion and accuracy. Um, in exchange for 33% of your HP. And I believe it does also activate Throat Spray, so you get plus two in your special attack, essentially, and plus one in all your other stats. Or you can just go for a clangering, uh, Clanging Scales with Throat Spray and just get a plus one while, while doing a lot of damage. As the last move on the set, it's a Flash Cannon, which pairs really nicely with Terra Steel. And just speaking on the Como, Como in general, the Terra Steel is a really cool combination because this Como has Bulletproof, so if you're up against a Fluttermane and you go for a Terra Fairy, Ray Terra Steel, they're going to be tempted to want to Shadow Ball you, especially in Best of One, but Bulletproof makes you immune from all bullet and ball based moves, and Shadow Ball is actually included in that. So, unless they have Mystical, mystical Fire on their Fluttermane, you're essentially walling them uh, and one hit KOing them with Flash Cannon if you're at plus two, I believe. Beyond that, a lot of the other members, T Choice Scarf Landorus with the standard Terra Flying set and the standard Terra Fairy Fluttermane, it's a Thunderbolt set just to be able to hit. Uh, lots of water types as well as t other tornadus just take that knockout right off the bat but yeah pretty standard two of those members and then last is the okidoki and i thought guard dog was going to be the most um most effective ability on this pokemon but this team actually has toxic chain which i think is really smart given it's an given it's an assault vest set that's going to be going for snarl and knock off a lot of the time basically being able to lower your opponent's special attack with the snarl and also have a 30 percent chance to badly poison is really cool uh, I have this Okidogi trained to, I believe, live after you've intimidated an opposing Ogre Pond Heart Flame form. You should be able to live the Ivy Cudgel even if they've gone for the Terra, which is pretty cool. You can do a lot of damage back with Poison Jab. If not, uh, I believe I have it EV to one at KO. No bulk Ogre Pond. If they have a bit of bulk, they'll definitely live, but. It's a very bulky, fast Okidoki, and I think a very cool set overall. Beyond that, these are actually my first games in the Regulation D+. We don't know if it's Regulation E properly yet. That rule set has not been 
released, interestingly enough, but it's gonna be my first battles in this post-DLC era, and I'm really excited to get those. If you enjoy the battles, enjoy the video, the rental, the PokePace list below, please subscribe to the channel, it helps out a ton, and let's get into it. So just a quick correction, this actually won't be in the ranked battle ladder. I realized that for some reason, the legendary Pokemon like Okidogi and Ogre Pond are legal, but um, just the decks, the Kimikaze, I don't actually, Kirikame, I don't know what the region named is, but this the Dex with Como in it is not legal, so uh, I couldn't go on land, ranked ladder because of that. But yeah, we'll we'll see how this goes. I believe this is Alberto's Lara, Alberto Lara's team or a variant of it, so yeah. I don't want to be spamming Snarl because King Gamut's a pretty big element of this team. All the steel types are a little spooky for Fluttermane as well, as is Intimidate. Um, actually... Yeah, we do kind of get walled by King Gambit on Como because we're Flash Cannon as well as the other Steel types. <clears throat> so that's kind of unfortunate. I might just get after it with the Tornadus Ogre Pond combo though. Um, eh. I think I'll lead Como and then go. Hmm. Kind of interesting here. I think I'm actually going to go a little weird and go Como in the back and Fluttermane on lead. So a pretty standard one in this Fluttermane lead to apply pressure. And then after maybe Intimidate has been whittled down, the Landorus has some chip damage on it. The rest of the battle can maybe be cleaned up for the Como to go in. But yeah, the it's definitely important to note that while these Pokemon are new and shiny, you can't just assume they're going to roll over these older school teams um, because they are just fundamentally well built. So although they might not have like dedicated answers to Ogre Pond, they definitely have tools. And yeah, they little Landorus, which means Ogre Pond probably wouldn't have been too good. And I think we get a lot of value out of our Tailwind here. So the temptation is Definitely just go Dazzling Gleam, Tailwind. And I do think just getting some chip damage off on anything is nice, except for, I guess. Uh, Shadow Ball is pretty safe too, into Flutter. I do like Tailwind, um, definitely Tailwind. The question is, do I Shadow Ball? Feels like there's 60 second timer on this, which is interesting on casual ladder, but yeah, I could just Shadow Ball. I think Dazzling Gleam Chip is just gonna be valuable overall though. Yep, they withdraw, so Shadow Ball, like they, they have a switch in for Shadow Ball in King Gambit and they have a switch in for Moonblast in Amungus. So I just went for an even Dazzling Gleam trade here and uh, Landorus didn't protect. So we're gonna be getting a hit off onto it. And some variants of this team run a Assault Vest King Gambit, and it kind of looks like that's the case here as well. And yeah, the Citrus Berry on Tornadus coming in pretty clutch. And now we have, I think, a pretty safe switch into Komoo to, pretend to preserve our Sunny Day, I want to say. I could go for a Dazzling Gleam um, or a Terra Fairy Dazzling Gleam to survive a Sucker Punch, but I want to preserve the Komoo's Terra so that I can beat Fluttermane in late game. Yeah, on Alberto's original team he used at Worlds, it was Swords Dance King Gambit. I don't know if he switched it up at the regional. I know a lot of people, that was their first instinct was, okay, King Gambit's good, but it can be better with Assault Vest, a little more consistent. And it does look like my opponent went for that as well. But here he is in all his glory. Como is back and they're switching something into Dazzling Gleam, fair enough. And it is Amoongus, so um, yeah, that's definitely wish I was overcoat, but they didn't go for a Sucker Punch. So Kowtow Cleave into the Komo. It has a pretty high base defense stat, but notably um, we aren't clear yet, right? I could go to Ogre Pond and I think I will. Their King Gambit's low, but at this point, uh, Clanging Scales I don't think is gonna knock out. 
What I can do, I think, is go protect Dazzling Gleam and bait out their option. And they are going to go for a Terra. I could have gone for a Terra Fairy of my own. They might just be like, okay, I'm tired of this. We're going Terra Dark and knocking out this Fluttermane, which would be fair. It's a Terra, Fa Terra Fire, which uh, definitely suggests to me they're not Sucker Punching because... I mean, they could be worried about an overcoat close combat. Like, that's the obvious fear on their part. They do Sucker Punch, and it does knock me out. Fair enough. But I'm pretty happy just getting my Ogre Pawn in. Um, yeah, they Pollen Puff, but to what end? We get Tailwind up, and now their Among Us can no longer... Um... Well, there is some concern, right? They could be Clear Smog. They can still Spore if... IV Cudgel doesn't knock them out. I really do think it should. Hmm. How many turns of Tailwind left? One turn. I think I can pretty safely go for Clangorous Soul. And... If I'd gotten some chip on the Fluttermane, I could easily go for a... Hmm. Like, the fear here is them switching out... Okay, they didn't switch, but switching out Landorus into Among... Into... Switching out King Gambit into Landorus, as I don't knock out their Amoongus with a IV Cudgel. Uh, you know what? I totally for forgot I could just follow me in front of the Amoongus, which was definitely a better play here for me. Because I survived the hit, I get a free setup. Now I'm actually risking maybe a low kick knockout or something like that. But yeah, we're getting the Omni Boost. We take that chunk of our health. It'd be nice if we had, like, Grassy Terrain or something on this team. But yeah, we're now at plus two. They go for Kowtow. And it brings us pretty low. But I think at this point, we're now maybe clear to... I don't know if Clanging Scales is actually going to knock them out, honestly. Because now they can Sucker Punch me. Which will knock me out. I think I'm going to go for Clanging Scales, Follow Me. I think it actually... Hmm. So it's a bit of a weird spot. If they Sucker Punch, I'm fine. But if they Kowtow Cleave, then I'm in a bit of trouble. I think they'll live the hit. I think I might Spiky Shield, actually. Hmm. No, I feel like follow me is a little safer. Because even if they do Sucker Punch, or they do not go for the Kowtow Cleave and Como falls asleep. Um, yeah, we got really close to a knockout on Amoongus, but the thought process here for me was, okay, you can basically knock out my Ogre Pond, but then everything's in range for Bleak Windstorm, it feels like. That ended up not being the case because King Gambit would have probably survived, but I actually could go for another Clangorous Soul. I think it's really, given that Sucker Punch, I'm lowering my defenses, probably knocks me out. I'm not going to go for that. But at this point, Clanging knocks out Amoongus. Ivy Cudgel should get the King Gambit. And will it get King Gambit? It's actually going to be pretty close. Hmm. Um. Yeah, it's it's a little close. I'm gonna go for a spiky shield, just because it feels like they can't knock out my Komoo. Like I I think low kick probably wouldn't. Okay, they protect Amoongus, Fair enough. Well, that was a really smart play. I think maybe. It depends. Uh, if they knock out, if they could knock out my Komoo, yeah, I expected King Gambit to live, which is why I protected. Ooh, they Kowtow the Komoo, which is interesting. It doesn't knock out. Very importantly, Komoo has a very high defense stat. Even though we're lowering it, uh, we're still getting the damage off. And now we just go for Follow Me. Yeah, the the Follow Me is just so clutch on the Ogre Pond. We shifted it away from damage onto the Amoongus to suddenly a support Pokemon, and it's just hard to deal with the, the switch up there. But they switch in the Fluttermane, just trying to tank the hits. 
Co um, the Among Us is going to go down, though. We are now low enough that... Man, Overcoat would be nice. And my Ogre Pawn is a little low. And I don't have Tailwind on the field, which is an issue. Um, hmm. You're definitely playing super strong. Talando comes out. It's going to be knocked out by Clank. Oh. That doesn't feel right on their part, I think. Hmm. Yeah, that's interesting. Um, All right, so probably went silent for a little bit. Uh, dog started barking, delivery person at the door, but yeah, I think the turn worked out. We knocked up the Flutter main. Uh, looks like we didn't need the Flash Cannon. Terra Steel, right? Yeah, we still have our Steel type. I think at this point, now we have a pretty safe Tailwind plus, um, yeah, I think we actually just get to neutral, go for Tailwind and knock out their Lando. You know what? We actually, if we go for Terra, would not knock out their Landris because they could Rage Powder it away. So we might have to try and knock it out with Woodhammer here, which I don't think it would do. Um, hmm. Super weird spot. I think I do have to Tailwind and go for it though. Yeah, they did go for Rage Powder, so if I went for Terra, they probably would have won with Rock Slide. Unless I knock them out with Bleak Wind Storm. Which I kind of doubt, but regardless, I would have had to survive this Rock Slide turn. Okay, we do knock out Lando, so very glad I didn't Terra there. That's one of those situations where you have to be conscious of the mechanic. Oh, they're, they're not too happy. Fair enough, but yeah, in that situation, although it's really tempting to go for the Terra... Um, Right, because you can just, you guarantee the knockout at neutral with an Ivy Cudgel, obviously, on both Amoongus and Landris. You have to remember, you are losing your immunity to the redirection from Rage Powder, so. Uh, my opponent definitely went for that read, and it didn't work out in their favor, and a little frustration there. Okay, so this time we have a Hail Tailwind team with a lot of new Pokemon. They have Tailwind, Mamoswine, not Tailwind, they have Tornadus, Mamoswine, Ninetales, Alola version, my low tick, rock type Ogre Pond, and the old classic Flutter Main. So they all, the, the Mamoswine and the Ninetales will get boosts. I do have to be a little wary of like the, I don't want Sun, like I, I want Sunny Day for Ninetales mainly. I think that's super valuable even if I don't lead Ogre Pond, which I'm kind of leaning not. Lando seems very strong against most of their team except for the Milotic, so I have to be worried about that on lead. I could lead Como and it'd be pretty interesting. I don't know if it would be a good call or not. Because if they lead Fluttermane, I'm kind of taking a lot of damage when I don't want to be. I think I'm actually gonna go Ogie Dogie on the lead. Okie Dogie. It's a weird name. I'm not sure how I'm, how I'm supposed to be pronouncing it. And I think Ogre Pond's actually pretty decent. And then Flutter as the last. Thought about Landorus, but the Milotic being on the field is a little spooky. I'm going to hedge my bets in that favor. All right, we're up against a lead of Tornadus plus nine tails. Fair enough. Um... So I'm immediately going for Sunny Day because I do not want to deal with that business. I'm gonna go for, I think, a Poison Jab onto the Tornadus. I feel like Ninetales isn't really that big of a threat. 
Snarl would be interesting. If I get poisons, it's valuable. Otherwise, it's kind of just a big risk. Yeah, I just don't want them to get Aurora Veil, essentially. They could be like Choice Specs Blizzard or something, which would be annoying, but relatively unlikely. And if I go for Sunny Day, the odds of them hitting are just way lessened. Uh, yeah, I think the damage into Tornadus is just more valuable. The only question is, is Knockoff more valuable for me? Probably not. Yep, so we're going for Sunny Day. We might be confirming that we're the faster Torn. Yeah. Not anymore, because they get Tailwind up, but... If we ever play this person again on ladder... Okay, they did just go for the Blizzard and they double connected, and it looks like it specs. Or they crit, so we get no information at all. That's a little annoying, because I basically get no value out of my Sunny Day, for the most part. Outside of my... <laughs> okay. Big poison on Torn. So, I think I'm going to go Flutter Main because I'm speed boosting. That's actually going to come into play here where I might not be able to outspeed these Pokemon on the field, but maybe something in the back I can. Like, I'm pretty sure I get the Torn and then. Like, nothing's really switching on Dazzling Gleam, Poison Jab. Yeah, they're switching out. They're trying to get the Sunny Day off the field, which, fair enough. Ogre Pond's coming in. So I could have close combated, but it has a pretty low special defense stat. Rain Dance. Okay. Not totally sure I follow the logic in that. Uh, yeah, Poison Jab. Because it's going to be at neutral... It probably gets pretty close to a knockout. Yeah, we get the knockout. Which, who knows if that's good, because now they get Hail on the field again. And their partner Pokemon in. Like, if it's Ninetales plus Mamoswine, I could be cooked. Like, maybe Terra Flying, Choice Specs. Uh, yeah, like, if Ninetales is Terra Flying and they just go for, like, Band Earthquake and Tailwind, I don't really have a counterplay to that. Yeah, Terra. Oof. Okay. Well, I will get a turn to protect on my other guy, which is good. Uh, am I going to get any value out of my Terra Grass? Probably not. So I think I'll try and knock out Mamoswine if they let me. Like, is this not just Blizzard Earthquake if they have it? I don't know. Like, if they let me hit the Mamoswine, I'll take it. I do think that the... Oh, wait, no. Fire typing was valuable for me on the Ogre Pond. That was a mistake. Whoops. Okay. I think if... Like, I'd probably lose the game if I do not wake... Like, if I don't survive this turn regardless with the Okie Dogi. And yeah, Ice School Spear, so it is loaded dice, unfortunately. Uh, looks like if they 4 hit, we could live. But no, they high roll, and they might have gotten the 5th hit anyways. Ah, I think they live this hit now, so that was really a mistake on my part. Oh yeah, that's unfortunate. Yeesh, okay. So if I had saved my Terra Fire, I think I would have been fine. Because obviously we knock out Mamoswine, we... Or we don't knock out Mamoswine, but we get to go for Terra Fire in the face of Ninetales, which now we don't really get to go for. Which is annoying. But what we could go for is... Well, they don't... They probably suspect. Um... Yeah, I don't know. I feel like we lose, but that's okay. We're gonna go for Spiky Shield. Maybe they bite into me here, like with Ice School Spear or something like that. They go for Gleam, which gonna do a fair chunk. Probably not that much. 
yeah, not a knockout, most notably. And they high horsepower into the Okidoki, which, just as a note, Icicle Spear is 100% accurate and does more damage, so that was a mistake. Yeah, and we knock out Mammoth Swine, so they actually do give us an out. Which I guess if you don't know that I, I'm... I, all the Ogre Pawn are going to have Spiky Shield and use it in that situation, I think that's probably just not... Not a solid play on their part, but yeah. Now we just Ivy Cudgel and Poison Jab, and unless they freeze us, we're good, and we outspeed, so yeah, they actually do need to freeze. And they don't even go for it, okay. So that's kind of the detriment of playing on casual ladder. They're not making the most op optimal plays, but we can at least see the holes in our own play and know like, okay, a better player probably beats us here based on our play, and we can just internalize that and make changes. But yeah, Ogre Pond's just 110 speed stat against Nine Tails' 109 is pretty significant. Um, to an extent, I'm kind of surprised they even led the way they did, because if I go Tornadus plus Ogre Pond, I can pretty much always just Tailwind and then knock out their Tornadus, and then if they get Aurora Veil up, so what? I just have my, my Iron Cudgel plus Sunny Day the next turn, so... Yeah, had an unfortunate turn one. I think we would have lived the blizzard based on them not being specs, but uh, we're able to climb back with some misplays on their part and some okay play on our behalf. Okay, another Regulation E team, or whatever we think Regulation E is going to be. We have Torn, Heatran, Rillaboom, Milotic, another Komwo, and Ogre Pawn, Fireform. Okay. So the instinct is go Lando, but Milotic obviously flies right in the face of that. I am max speed on my Ogre Pawn, which of course is nice. I'm pretty fast on my Torn. I could go for a Taunt Mirror and try and win that, which I might go for. Hmm. Fluttermane's pretty safe. Como is pretty cool, but if they're soundproof, we lose that mirror super hard. Um, I think I might go Okie Dokie. Actually, I might just try and try and get them with my Ogre Pawn, honestly. And I actually like Okie Dokie a fair... Mm, not so much. I feel like Lando Flutter is pretty good into their back. A little boring. Whoops, I defaulted. I, Yeah, I tried to get Okie Dogie in over the Lando just because one, Landris is boring. I want to use Okie Dogie and not kind of just rely on opponent's misplay with the Terra Dark. But I actually position it well against like a team I think it's pretty well poised against. Heatran, my Lodic doesn't do a lot to it unless it's called Burns and Rillaboom. But who knows? I got three of my Pokemon in. I don't think it selected any of them. So we might just be leading Torn Como. Torn Milotic, that's interesting. Yeah, it is Torn Como, unfortunately. Yikes, okay. So who do we have? Lando, okay. I would have liked my own Ogre Pawn here a lot, but it is what it is. Can't do anything about that. I'm gonna go for Taunt on their Torn, and I think Cloth go for maybe Clangorous Soul, get after it. Uh, I don't know. Let's go for it. The only, like, the problem with Clangorous Soul is even when you get it off and, like, you get the tear off and they go for an Ice Beam and the Bleak One Storm and you resist them both, you're taking 33% of your HP from the Clang and then they're doing close to another 30 to 50. So, yeah, we're taunting, we're just going for it, but I... They might not even go for it on this turn. And it's a Mental Herb anyways, that's an issue. Okay. Yikes. Okay, they go for Tailwind, so we're going to get not a lot of value out of this. Like, a Tailwind would have been better for us, but we went for it. Went for the risk. And they go for Ice Beam, and it doesn't freeze us. 
but notably they did outspeed our, well, that doesn't matter. Of course they'll outspeed, we didn't have our boost yet. Um, we do have pretty free clangorous or clanging scales now. We can get an offset tailwind if we want it, which we probably do. I think I will go for, hmm. I feel like Scald Bleakwind might not, might not knock us out. So I'll just go Tailwind Clang. Yeah, they'd have to not attack this turn to get the Tailwind off or the Taunt which means we do a ton to Torn and Milo Tick. It's actually a two at KO if we hit again next turn and they go for Bleak Wind, misses our Torn. Very welcome. Uh, that does a lot of damage actually, which is, yeah, because of a crit. And they go for Ice Beam into the Torn. Totally fine with that. And they knock us right into the Citrus Berry. So every time we've brought the Torn, it's activated the Citrus Berry. So super valuable, consistent item there. And Milotic actually does heal up with leftovers. Okay. Now, so I could boost up my speed. Who do they have in the back? They have Ogre Pond. Yeah, we don't get a lot of value out of Sunny Day. We actually get none. So I think I'm gonna go for Bleak Wind Clang. Yeah, I'm gonna go for Bleak Wind Clang. They go for Protect, which makes sense. Just trying to heal, definitely out of range, but okay, there's Rain Dance, so I guess Sunny Day would have just been canceled by that. But it's interesting they're setting that up. They've given me 100% Bleak Wind Storm rate, or hit rate, which is definitely welcome. Like my only fear for the last turn was okay, if I miss Bleak Wind Storm, I'm kind of in trouble. Or they're taking a knockout onto either Como or Tornadus, but yeah, this is the one thing that Como takes advantage of. If you play passively, um, the plus two boost plus the Ami boost is a good trade for the 33% if you take negligible damage in the setup, and that's basically what happened. So Real Boom comes in. We are we're neutral attack stat, so that's definitely noteworthy. We're neutral defense stat. I think I'm just going to go for Bleak Wind Protect because the Grassy Terrain healing probably takes us out of Grassy Glide range. Yeah, and they do go for that. They don't go for Fake Out in the Torn, which I think is a mistake because now we just get a big Bleak Wind off. Yeah, so Como just exerting a lot. Yep, so we double live, so pretty good turn there. And now I think everything's in range for Bleak Wind. Clanging scale, sorry. Package. Yep, protect on Milotic, fair enough. But yeah, I think one of these attacks is going to knock out Rillaboom. Oh, Komoho lives on one. Yeah, it has a lot of physical natural bulk and decent special bulk as well. It's only a little bit lacking in the HP stat. Everything else on its stat spread is like pretty solid. So yeah, at neutral, I don't think that was banded. I feel like it would have knocked out if so, but yeah, the Como with the perfect steel type for this battle. Yeah, so like I was saying, this uh, this is exactly what Como is built for. These more passive Firewater Grass teams that don't really have a steel resist kind of get eaten up. And if you do have a fairy type in like Fluttermane, after getting up to plus two, you just knock it out with Flash Cannon, especially if you've gone for the steel type. And now we, I believe, have the steel type advantage. They could grassy glide me. Ooh. Oh, did, uh, I guess the tailwinds wore off. Okay. I don't think that's a problem though, because we should outspeed their Pokemon with both of ours. They haven't burned Terra notably, but at this point I do feel pretty solid about our chances, especially because they turned off their Ogre Pond's offensive power with the uh, with the rain dance it can only go for things like wood hammer and, th and stuff like that which is going to hit very hard in the grassy terrain but not that hard and this is like the one like 
Como is definitely a strong Pokemon. I think in general, if you're going to be going for this clangorous scales, uh, steel typing along with dragon coverage as your spread attack, I feel like Goldengo kind of does the job a lot better without having to take damage. But the one advantage is that you can just go for, once you do get the setup off, you're not limited, you're not decreasing your damage, you're decreasing your defense stat. So that's usually a lot better for the for a sweeper than Goldengo's lowering its special attack. So a good game to my opponent, but yeah, Firewater Grass is not the option against gra grass types. That's just a, uh, that's just Elite Four Lance stuff. Got to figure that one out. Okay, last one of the day, and it's against a rain team with the Water Form, Ogre Pond, Iron Hands, Goldengo, Landorus, Rillaboom, and Pelipper. So, uh, the Pelipper Wide Guard is definitely a big threat for both Tornadus, Como, Landorus, and Fluttermane. So we gotta be conscious of that. I think Sunny Day is exceptional for us here to the point where we might even have it in the back. I feel like there's not a lot stopping us from going Torn Ogre Pond. Really? So I think I'm gonna go for that. Torn of this Ogre Pond, Sunny Day. And then in the back, Como is very bad against Goldango, I will say that. Well, not quite. Because they can't hit you with Shadow Ball, and if you go for Terra Steel, they're weak to that. But it is very bad into Iron Hand, so I think I'll, by virtue of that, I won't bring it. I think Ogie Dogie is strong. Uh, decent against Pelipper. I mean, not really, but if we have it chipped, we should outspeed it and knock it out with a Poison Jab. Rillaboom, easy peasy. Iron Hands, I think we're favorable against. And um, I think Flutter is going to be kind of a liability. Usually it's pretty good in terrain, but the Grassy Glide from the Rillaboom is a bit of an issue. So I'm going to go Lando here. Because I think that enables my Okie Dogie to be a lot better against most of their team. We could also surprise their Goldango pretty bad with knockoff. Like, I, I definitely wouldn't expect that on an Okie Dogie. That most likely. Okie Dogie. God, it's a weird name. All the, the loyal three have such weird names. In terms of pronunciation, it's going to take a while. And Ogre Pond Pelipper. So yeah, they just go right for their rain lead, which is A-OK -okay with me, given we're just going for Sunny Day. On some level, it could be kind of tempting to just get after it with Bleak Windstorm, but I don't think it's the right play. Um, I think I might be able to just like Get pretty close to a knockout this turn. Oh, should I preserve my Terra? I don't think I get a ton of value out of it on anything else. So I think I will just go for an Ivy Cudgel on their Ogre Pond. Well, I think I'll go Sunny Day. Spiky Shield. I want to burn their turn here. I want to see what they're going for. Because what I don't want to happen is I go for Sunny Day. Oh, yeah. Also, yeah, Woodhammer is just much cleaner now. I forgot that they could go for a Terra and lose their Water type. I suspected some defensive counterplay from their Ogre Pawn. And just wanted to protect mine. But it looks like, yeah, Sunny Day is going to be a solid defensive play for my Torn. And yeah, I think this was maybe, we'll see We'll see what happens. But they go for Ivy Cudgel into my spiky shield. Took a long animation to do so. And Hurricane into my Ogre Pond. Man, that's a long animation. But yeah, now we have pretty free, um, I guess they could go for Hydro Pump. I think for my play, I like Bleak Wind Storm, Ivy Cudgel into their Pelipper, because I think that's gonna knock out pretty easily. If I hit, ooh. 
Yeah, if I had gone for Terra Fire, I probably... I do knock out, I think. Oh, they get the crit. That's unfortunate. Now I need to hit my, my Storms. Which I don't on the Pelipper. So I thought they'd protect their Ogre Pond and I wanted to get after the Pelipper. And that play does work if I hit. Oh, they go for Tailwind. Interesting. We lowered the speed on their Ogre Pond, so I'm kind of fine with that. Because now we just win the speed tie, right? And we could go for the same Bleak Wind again. I think we'll Bleak Wind Woodhammer. Oh, I never got Tailwind up. Whoops. That's unfortunate. Weather Ball Pelipper is cool though. It's a definitely, it's a more consistent option than Hyper Hydro Pump. But they Ivy Cudgel again, that's annoying. Yeah, because I could have just gone for Tailwind and knocked out the Ogre Pond, so. Not tracking my turns well, but the Bleak Wind Storm kind of threw me for a loop there. But really shouldn't have. Yeah, so we would have knocked out the Pelipper. But we would have lost the Ogre Pond anyways. I doubt we would have remembered to check Tailwind turns, so. Bit of a slip there, but that is something like to be very conscious of is that, did they have Defiant on this team? I don't think they did. What was it? Rillaboom, Goldango, Landorus T. Yeah, or Landorus Incarnate. Yeah, they do switch out Lando, so I'm glad I didn't just bite into that. We do kind of have to go for Tailwind here. I feel like Tailwind Rock Slide is starting to look pretty good. Ooh, you know what? Tailwind Terra Flying looks really solid against a lot of their Pokemon. I think I am going to go for that. Because odds are they're going to go for a Cudgel which would do a lot of damage even if I, like if I don't stay terrored even after Intimidated. One, they could crit and probably get pr pretty close to a knockout. Uh, but two, I'm not doing much damage with Rock Slide and I'm risking misses. So with my slightly offset Tailwind, I might be able to get my Ogie Dogi in a position where I can beat the Lando with it. And Landorus Incarnate rarely covers a Rarely has rock type coverage, so I should be fine on that front. Yep, they sludge bomb the torn, and it doesn't knock me out. And it doesn't get a poison type. Unlikely that it could have. Yeah, so if they got, had gotten a crit, they would have knocked me out, I think. They did 50, 54. So double that, that's 108. 50% uh, boost from the crit, plus getting through the actual intimidate, I think would have done it pretty easily. At this point though, I think, mm. so the one fear is them, yeah, they only have, I think I have, because I have two turns of Tailwind on them, I should be good to risk this Terra Blast or this hit. And if I hit, I win. Okay, they cancel, which I think was indicative that they had Rillaboom in the back, but I'm a little unsatisfied not getting to see that. But yeah, definitely could have made that game a lot better if I had been a little bit more aggressive with my play. So that's going to do it with the Como Okie Dogi Ogre Pond team that we used today. He was able to get 10-1 in the wide league, as said before, uh, and made it to finals before finally losing there. It's one match of the tournament. I have the rental code in the top right of the video, as well as the PokePace with the EV spread in the description below if you want to take it on the uh, casual ladder for now or the Pokemon Showdown Regulation E ladder. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please leave a like and subscribe to the channel. And yeah, with all that being said, peace, y'all.